Hey guys, Maple Tiger here. Today I'm returning once again to my AU OC challenge, the alternate universe art challenge where I draw my original characters in each other's worlds. This time we're focusing on my Baldur's Gate 3 OC and player character. Let's get into it. I have been playing a lot of Baldur's Gate 3 the past couple months and have grown very attached to the character I designed to play it with, so I thought they would be a perfect addition to this challenge. We'll be drawing them in four new worlds my Blue Kingdom story, my board game universe, Warrior Cats, and Wild Frost. While also drawing my OCs from all those worlds into Baldur's Gate 3, that would be Adara, Nyx, Mapletail, and Starloom, respectively. I am very excited for this one. If you're not familiar with Baldur's Gate 3, it's an open world RPG video game based on D&D, full of interesting characters, difficult choices, and complex turn-based combat. I have well over 100 hours in it at the time of writing this, and I'm planning a second playthrough, so suffice it to say, it's a lot of fun. Before I get into the designs, I want to talk a little bit about my Baldur's Gate 3 player character. I always use my own name in games when I have to choose a name, so I ended up giving this now OC a name of their own a fair bit later. I chose the name December. I honestly can't remember why, but it feels right for them. December is a Seldarine drow, and I chose the background of Outlander for them, as it works well with their race and class. Speaking of class, I chose Druid with the Circle of the Moon subclass for my love of animals, and Druid's unique gameplay mechanic of transforming into all manner of creatures. I'll give the little backstory I wrote for their art fight page a read for y'all now. December grew up in the Underdark, but didn't fit in well with the other drow kids. They were always dreaming of the surface and all its plants and creatures, and their pale patches of skin made for plenty of teasing. They trained as a druid in hopes of living above ground one day, out in the bright forests of Faerun. The way they achieved that goal was far from expected, when they ended up captured on the Nautiloid, escaping and starting an intense life-changing journey that would lead them further than they ever imagined. Alright, on to the drawings. The top of this piece are new designs for December, while the bottom features an OC-filled Baldur's Gate 3 scene. Let's start off with the Blue Kingdom story design at the top left. December fit very naturally into my original story, and I've now added them in officially. I decided they would be a part of my Fae people, so they could keep their pointed ears and the ideas of their backstory being born underground and wanting to explore the surface. A characteristic of my Fae is that they have shades of pink hair and blue eyes, which also translated pretty well for December. They were also able to keep their name, and I added the last name of Underglade for them. As for the specifics of their story, December was born in the Fae underworld underneath the southern desert to Mother Wisteria, along with older sibling Arrow. Wisteria had a parent on the surface and was even born there, so she passed those stories on to her children leaving a big impression on December. Wisteria was supportive of December's dreams of adventure, but Arrow had many concerns for their siblings' safety. Knowing that some Feyborn species who had left the Underworld generations ago now faced endangerment or even extinction. When December grew up, they had their first experience with surface dwellers when a fox woman, Holly, and a winged woman, Ori, fell through a weak spot in the sands above and tumbled into the lush world below. They were part of a group of refugees and a few knights from the Blue Kingdom, and they had been heading to the Desert Kingdom to seek shelter. They found that shelter in the Underworld with the Fae King's permission. Most of the Fae were curious but kept their distance, while December introduced himself to everyone and bombarded them with questions about the world above. Most were happy to tell them their stories, glad to be away from the scorching heat of the desert. With their head filled with new tales, December resolved to start their journey and began to prepare. Let's get into the details of their design now. They kept their rose and orange hair, but their eyes reversed, going from purple with blue partial heterochromia to blue with a spot of purple to better fit with their place in this world. My Fae have human skin tones, so I gave December light brown skin in a similar shade to their purple in Baldur's Gate. I also gave them their freckles and scars, though later decided they wouldn't have scars in this world to simplify their design a bit, though I kept them in this drawing. I also vastly simplified their vitiligo, keeping it to the upper half of their forehead and on their chest. I gave them their piercings and a long sleeve shirt with a fancy neckline. I want to talk about December's Warrior Cat's design next. 
I decided that they'd be a part of ThunderClan for their main character energy, and the fact that the four other cats I've drawn for this challenge were from the four other clans, so I wanted a full set. For a name, I chose a prefix I would have considered for myself if I hadn't settled on Mapletail, which is Plum. Their full name being Plum Patch, for their vitiligo. I used a toned down version of their purple skin color to get more of a gray look for their fur, and made the white patches a bit paler. The patches now follow their canon vitiligo locations the best I could get on a cat. I covered them in darker spots too for their freckles. I gave them long fur to reference the cat form they take in Baldur's Gate from being a druid. Their eyes remained the same, but with light purple whites so they'd be more cat-like. They kept their scars and I added scars to their ears based on where their earrings would go in other forms. Let's move on to the world of the character I use for playing board games. As usual, I'm drawing December as a cat person here to match with the others. December Underglade as a name actually already fits the naming conventions of this little world, so there's no need to change anything there. I imagine they'd be a caretaker of various creatures here, to fit with them being a druid. For their design, their fur and eyes come straight from the warrior look, where their hair is very close to their original form, though with some extra braids in their ponytail, and cute little fluffy cheek fur sticking out from underneath it. Their scars remain the same here, as well as their piercings, though I opted for simple studs and rings. The outfit I had some fun with, using a sage green for a tank top with some cutouts on the sides. Then I added a fluffy neck piece and leather armbands in a dusky purple. This is probably my favorite design of the bunch. I just think it's super cute and the colors turned out nicely. The last section of this is a wild frost design. I decided to make them a Shade Mancer like Adara and Starloom in the second part of this series. I thought it made the most sense with December being a drow and their use of magic as a druid. I had to change up their name here too, choosing Drow Rook. I wanted it to start with the same letter, and I got the Rook part of it as it's a common last part of Shade Mancer names. Like last time, I chose three Wild Frost charms for them too that best fit their personality and story. Charms are little guys you can stick on your character to boost stats or add abilities. I chose bling, which gives you money, as in Baldur's Gate 3 I have a habit of picking up every tiny little thing to sell. Then I chose frost hand, for it being a little purple hand. And lastly, the lumen ring, which ups various stats, and that just kind of fit with the game mechanics of Baldur's Gate. So the actual design. The hair and long ears are really the only thing directly from their original look and I used the same skin tone as the Blue Kingdom design. For the clothes, I used reference of Shade Mancer to get the details right. I gave them a purple deer mask with white to reference their vitiligo, and gray markings similar to their tattoos, as well as little scratches where their scars would be. I used a couple of the charms as earrings as well. I gave them a purple and white cloak with the same markings as the mask, matching gloves, and a more gray and purple tunic situation. Their sword isn't very visible, but it's a dark purple frost blade, a bit of magic with melee. Lastly, some simple silver jewelry and details. Let's move on to the bottom half of the piece, the Baldur's Gate 3 scene. I have everyone sitting around a campfire in a sunset lit forest. December stands at the back in their true form, watching the fire with the others. We'll go from left to right starting with my Blue Kingdom story OC, Adara. Unlike the others, this is not a design I made up for this drawing. In Baldur's Gate 3, you have to design two characters when you start the game, yourself and your guardian. As my favorite OC, I made December's guardian look like Adara. I made her a half wood elf, as it fit pretty well for her. For a class, I chose Rogue, with the assassin subclass, as that's her profession in my story. And I'd give her the background of criminal, Aside from the elf ears, replacing her usual Black Panther ones, she's pretty one-to-one -one design-wise. She has her dark skin, black hair, which usually ends up being a bit violet when I draw her, and light blue eyes, though a slightly darker blue that was available in the character creator. I chose a tattoo for her too that looks like tiger stripes to reference her cat form. The outfit is based on the Guardians, but without all the armor, a simple red tunic and a paler neck piece. Let's move on to Nyx the character that I use when I play various board games. I also actually plan to use her in a Baldur's Gate 3 playthrough with my friends as soon as they have crossplay. 
I chose to make her a Mephistopheles tiefling, as they're pretty magic based, and I wanted a more unnatural skin color, as she's a cat person with grey fur in her own world. Well, Nyx is canonically a wizard in her story, and a mage in the Blue Kingdom, I decided to make her a sorcerer here, for a couple reasons. Since I'm going to be using her to play, I wanted to choose a magic based class that isn't among the ones I've tried with other party members. And that kind of just left Sorcerer is the big one. No complaints here, that still fits her story and personality pretty well across the board. I also chose the background of Urchin as it fit best for her out of the ideal ones for her class. So the design. I used a dark grey purple for her skin and gave her her vitiligo. Her hair is long and gold with dark grey highlights. A little bit of a mix of all the designs I've made for them. Their horns are grey and white, much like their usual cat ears. And she keeps her blue-yellow heterochromia, but with black instead of white as many tieflings have. Nyx's outfit is a simple lilac shirt and darker pants, colours taken right from her OG design. Next up is Mapletail, my warrior cat Sosi, of course. When I play as Nyx, I plan to use Mapletail's design for my guardian. I made her a Asmodeus Tiefling, mostly just for coloring reasons, and a ranger with a subclass of Hunter, as it would be my second choice for a class for myself after Druid. And her background would be Guild Artisan, as it felt closest to Artist. For her design, I used her Pale Markings color for her skin, and covered her in light and dark freckles. Her hair is similar to her Blue Kingdom design, but with some small braids in the color of her cat fur, with some light teal highlights. Her horns are darker, the color taken from her fur markings again. And her eyes are her usual teal but with black. I gave her some simple white tattoos in the shape of tabby stripes. And I chose her some fancy jewelry in the form of a pendant and a gemstone earring. Her clothes are a long sleeve black shirt and a teal tank top with tan pants and classic brown boots. Last but not least, let's turn to Starloom, my wild frost OC. I made her a Zariel tiefling just to finish the set. I chose the class of Paladin for her, Oath of the Ancients, as I thought it fit well with her story and journey, which I talked about in depth last week in my wild frost zine video. For a background, I chose Entertainer for her optimistic vibe. For her design, I like the gold-yellow skin color for her, as a character with a story based around the sun. Her hair is her usual pink-brown with light streaks, braided though without the bangs to accommodate her horns. They keep their scars, star tattoos, and pale green eyes. Their horns are three tones, beige and a paler beige with a brown band in the middle. Her outfit is very much based on her Wild Frost look, but with a few altered and lightened colors. She wears a pale blue and yellow t-shirt with dark blue trimmed sleeves. Their pants are muted brown, and they wear light brown boots with lighter brown and dark blue accents. And there you have it. Thanks for watching! This was really fun to draw, and nice to finally share it here. I'll likely not be adding to this series for a long while, it's unusual for a piece of media to capture me in the way Warriors, Wildfrost, and Baldur's Gate 3 have, to the point where I want to create OCs for it, especially ones I'm invested in. And it's even more unlikely I'll be starting any new original stories, separate from what I'm already working on. But you never know. I've already got an extensive profile for December up on my Art5 page too, if you want to check them out this July. I'll leave a link in the description. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next Thursday.